the thousands are marching across the United States, demanding stricter gun laws. The rallies are part of a renewed push for tighter gun control after a number of mass shootings. U.S. lawmakers have passed some restrictions, but the measures are likely to be overturned in the Senate because Democrats don't have enough votes. The Brooklyn Bridge in New York. Just one of more than 400 rallies held across the U.S. on Saturday. The marches were organized after a spate of deadly shootings across the country. Buffalo, New York and Uvalde, Texas were two of them, carried out by attackers with high-powered firearms, weapons that demonstrators here would like to see under stricter regulation. If you look at it, all of the recent murders have been done by 18-year-olds, and yet they can't smoke because they can't buy cigarettes, they can't buy liquor because they're not mature enough to handle those two things, and yet they're mature enough to handle an AR-15. That's ridiculous. The biggest rally was in Washington, D.C., where senators are set to vote on gun reform later this week. The U.S. House of Representatives has passed bills which would, in principle, raise the age limit on buying semi-automatic weapons and establish federal red flag laws. But the bills are not likely to become law because of united Republican opposition in the Senate. Something activists here cannot understand. If our government can't do anything to stop 19 kids from being killed and slaughtered in their own school and decapitated, it's time to change who is in government. From the very top of the U.S. government, President Joe Biden urged demonstrators not to give up. Keep marching. It's important. Look, this has to become an election issue. The way people listen, senators, congressmen, is when people say, I'm gonna, this is going to affect my vote. Too many people are dying, needlessly. But protesters are not giving up yet, and they're demanding action from their lawmakers. Well, DW's Sumi Samaskanda was at the rally in Washington, D.C. It's good to have you with us, Sumi. What uh, specific measures or changes do the protesters want? Well, quite simply, Rahila, they want just any sort of change. I mean, we saw so many signs imploring lawmakers to do something, to make uh, schools, churches, supermarkets safer. We have seen the spate of mass shootings in Buffalo, New York, in Uvalde, Texas, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the anger and the frustration was really palpable among protesters. Specifically, the March for Our Lives movement, this was founded after a mass shooting in Florida four years ago, and they have a list of policy proposals they want to see addressed that includes a, a national licensing and registry system, a ban on assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. That's essentially how many bullets a gun can fire off. Um, policies to disarm gun owners who pose a risk. Also, a national gun buyback program. But we have to say, Rahila, that while the majority of Americans do clearly, in survey after survey, say they want some sort of restrictions on guns, it becomes tricky when you talk about the how. Because we did speak to gun control advocates this past week who say there shouldn't be a ban on assault weapons or that there shouldn't be a national registry. Um, what they can agree on is that something needs to be changed. And you mentioned the March for Our Lives protests, which, you know, that happened about four years ago. But how big was the turnout this time around in other parts of the United States? Well, there were big protests in cities across the country, from New York to Chicago to Los Angeles, and we saw a pretty big crowd here in D.C. We have to say what is different this time from the previous march that you mentioned. We heard from protesters that there is this renewed sense of urgency after the mass shootings that I mentioned and the fact that America has witnessed more mass shootings than days in the year. So all of that has contributed to this um, fresh momentum, really, in the push for gun safety legislation. But we have to remind viewers that nothing has actually changed in terms of legislation. Legislation. And a lot of protesters we saw and spoke to carried signs expressing their fury with lawmakers who have blocked any um, progress on meaningful reform. Yeah, and there is also a renewed push in Congress for gun control, but there are some stumbling blocks there. Just talk us through those. 
Yeah, the stumbling block is and has been um, a gridlock in the Senate. So the House of Representatives, where the Democrats have a majority, um, they were able to pass a package of measures this week that include things that they call common sense gun laws, like removing guns from the homes of people who are considered a risk, raising the age to purchase a semi-automatic firearm from 18 to 21. But that is all but doomed in the Senate. And the reason, Rahila, is that the Democrats don't have the numbers. They would need 10 Republicans to vote with them on this package. There is not much chance that they will get that majority. They are still negotiating. There's some optimism, but most observers here believe that Congress will come up short again on legislation on gun control. DW's Sumi Samaskanda in Washington, D.C. Thank you so much.